Right. Can I ask my question now then? Ready? Sure. Okay. So God dictates morality, right? Is that your position? Um, no, I wouldn't put it in that way. I, w I would say that God gives us commands. Right. So morality is defined by God's nature. Is that okay. Before we go on, before we go on with your questions, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, right? I'm a fundamentalist Christian. Can you tell me what your fundamental worldview is? What's, what's the relevance? Wait, wait, Christian atheist. That's, yeah, that's, you do that's, 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 I have a question for you. Hey, Troyan, you're going to have yeah, to yeah. wait your turn. Otherwise, I will turn you down and I will not respond to you at all. Okay, question, so London, question, what, is, what is your basic worldview? The, the question I want to ask you. The question I want yeah, to ask I'll, you. I'll take your is, question. But I have a policy when I interact with people and they ask me questions, I want to know what their fundamental worldview is first. My fundamental worldview is Are, are you an atheist or a theist? I am an atheist. Okay, go ahead. So I want to ask you, God's nature, is it so for reasons or for no reason? So such as things like morality are dictated by God's name. God is good, therefore what God dictates is good, right? But is that nature arrived at for reasons or for no reasons? Um, God's commands that, that, God's that he nature, was. Yeah. God's nature. Is God's nature arrived at either by reasons or by no reasons? Um, God's God's nature uh, is unconditionally non-dependent and eternal. So no reason. So it's it would be arbitrary. No, then. no uh, obviously you're not listening. Okay, I gave you the reason at what what the the reason why God's nature exists is because it is it is necessary, non-contingent and non-dependent. Yes, but what makes the nature be such as it is? What makes God good is it a reason or is it no reason? um when we speak of god's properties and attributes we're speaking analogically we're taking from things that we know in an attempt to understand and describe or define what what god is and these these are an, uh, analogical representations they are not univocal in other words we cannot speak uh, about god's nature um, because God's nature is, from his point of view, incomprehensible. But he makes us to understand his nature via analogy. Okay? So what are the shared properties then? Uh, is that analogical between us and God? Yeah, I only talk with one person at a time. Go ahead, London. All right, I, mean, I don't want to hog the mic. So, I mean, I just, I guess I'll, I'll okay, leave that, it that's with... That's fine. That's fine. I have a question. I have a question for you. Are you up to it? Yeah, okay. when I'm you up. when you claim when you when you claim you're an atheist, on on what basis uh, do you deny the existence of God? I I think that there are no good reasons to accept it as true, and uh, by good reason I mean uh, something that gives me cause to elevate one answer over another. It doesn't necessarily follow that you are unaware of a reason for God that no God exists. That's a non sequitur. Yeah, and I, I, I haven't said that. I mean, I'm an atheist because okay. I believe that there are no good reasons. That right, I, but it doesn't I'm follow. It, yeah, okay, I, I don't know. Did you hear what I said? It doesn't follow that you feel you don't have a reason to believe in God, that therefore there is no God. That's a non sequitur. I didn't say therefore there is no God. Okay, well, your position necessarily entails the falsity of God, whether you realize it or not. Well, my position is such that epistemologically, I don't see any justification for us for accepting the necessity of a, a, a conscious okay. agent. Okay. Well, source of that what you just, what you just stated is an implicit, not an explicit an implicit denial of the existence of God. I'll be glad to explain it to you if you want. No, You're it, still it, denying, say, you are, listen, do you understand, do you understand that you can explicitly and you can implicitly deny something? Your position, 
necessarily entails the implicit denial of the existence of God, although you may not verbally explicit deny the existence of God. Now, if you don't understand why your position entails that, I'll be glad to explain it. Well, I would say that, that all that position says is that the burden of proof for the claim that God exists has not been met. That's all that it okay. says. Okay, yeah, what you're giving me is the typical atheist cliché uh, canard. You're not responding to what I said to you. I said, do you understand how and why what you have said necessarily entails the denial and falsity of God? Do you understand that? Or do you not accept it? It implies that at the, at the very least, I think it's plausible that this may have come about without a God. It doesn't. Yeah, you're, you you're not responding to my question. You're, what you just said to me as though you didn't even hear my last question to you. Ask the question and I'll answer it directly. Okay. okay. Do you understand that what you have said about your um, uh, mental states about God necessarily entail the implicit denial and falsity of God? Do you understand that? And if you don't, I'll be glad to explain it to you. The denial... Yes, I accept. The falsity, no. I think that's a, a bridge too far. No, to, no. Okay, so you're you're using the word denial meaning to non-accept. I'm using the yes. word denial to mean does not exist. Your position... Well, that's, that's not what the word means. Listen, listen. Okay, listen. You're not listening. I'll say it again. Do you understand that your position, what you, your mental states that you've expressed about God necessarily entail the implicit falsity God of the existence the of God. And if you don't understand how that follows, I'll explain it to you. Okay. I obviously don't understand how that follows because I don't agree with you, but please explain how you think it follows. Okay. When, when somebody takes the, the, the um, kind of position, I reject the God claim or I lack belief in God, but I don't deny they think that the denial of God's existence is only entailed or encompassed by an explicit denial. One can implicitly deny something by the ramifications or the implications of what they say. So when you say that you don't have good reasons to believe in God, then your capacity to reason is going to be in virtue of some other transcendental ultimate or absolute which is not wow, God. Crazy. Okay. Now, if you, um, yeah, if you start up again, you have followed me from server to server, Fox, and please do not disrupt the conversation. Uh, you've stalked before, uh, and oh, I, I, I please, please, please do not. Me, okay. <laughs> now I'm just, I'm yeah. going to turn you down yeah. and I'm going to, I'm going to ignore you. You've tried to disrupt my conversations in the past. It's not going to happen here yeah, either. Okay. So, so let me, yeah, okay, so, I'd like, so I'd like, I'd like, I'd like, I'd like to finish. What he's, to, what he's trying to do is he's trying to subtly derail my conversation with you. Now, to um, if you forward. say if you say that you can be in possession of at least one fact that does not necessarily have to reference God, where God is the origin point for that fact, then it necessarily follows from that position the falsity of God. And the reason why is because in a world where God exists, God would then be the origin point for all facts. If you can possess um, or assert one fact that does not require God as the origin point in order for that fact to exist or ha possess intelligibility, then you have indirectly denied the existence of God. Now, most people um, aren't familiar with this perspective, okay? But it necessarily follows. It doesn't follow. Um, look, I, I'm I'm even happy to to grant that for the sake of. I mean, I obviously disagree. Um, I think you're 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 overstepping the mark. Well, then you're going to have to really... offer a rebuttal. Look, uh, well, well, here, here, here's here's what I would say, and what I would say is that I'm I'm happy to grant some kind of um, contingent thing upon which you know the source of existence and everything every everything that bears from it um, goes back to you. now. That doesn't in any way talk about a god. I mean, like naturalistic pantheism, which it isn't a, a, a god. I mean, the word pantheist is, is in there, but naturalistic pantheism is is pretty much just laws of nature and no 
um, no minds guiding any process, right? So for me, the word God is intrinsically coupled with yeah. a, mm -hmm. a will and an intent and a, and a, and a yeah. mind, a consciousness, right? So yeah, but you wouldn't you, be if able you, to... If you, if, you, if, you can, if you can appeal to naturalistic pantheism, which is to just say that every answer that we're not yet aware of can be answered by appealing to unknown natural causes, and for which we already have a, a plethora of, um, of evidence to support times when we have you know, appealed to minds and found out that actually it's, you know, unknown natural forces. And, you know, again and again, we've gone through that process. And um, there's no good reason that I can see that we must now, um, out of necessity, uh, posit some kind of mind to answer the questions that, again, we find ourselves faced with. It's, um, again, it's, it's, it's a speculation and an unnecessary one, given that, unknown natural causes is on the table and um and seems to be the answer that keeps popping up again and again through throughout history okay well you you know wait, that was, well, you're, that, can i have a question that was no you you can wait okay i'll be glad oh, to speak wait. with you okay okay yeah you can wait i'll be glad yeah i'll be glad to speak with you but I'm not well, going to maybe I die around. in 10 okay. minutes. You know? Okay, listen. If, okay, good. If you Then I suggest you <laughs> repent and turn to Jesus Christ now before you die. <laughs> now, no, I'm you not. Can I'm wait. not. <laughs> you can, listen, little boy, you can wait, okay? Now, okay. London. <laughs> now, London. Now, London. Um, that was lovely rhetoric, okay? But you didn't answer the question. The question is, how do you account that there is no God. Your position, no matter how you formulate it, necessarily entails the falsity of God. How is it the case that God does not exist? That was the question that I posed to you. Yeah, I mean, that, that, as a, that I'm happy to, to say that. If, if naturalistic pantheism is what someone's going to go with, then they, they, they can You're say You're repeating that they, what you said before. I've already heard this already. Yeah, I know. try so something new. Well, no, I mean, I, I, I think that this is clearly something that is working in opposition, direct opposition, is mutually exclusive to your conclusion of there having to be a God. I mean, just say, for example, you could have existence is something that intrinsically entails an eternal change and a, and a product of that eternal change. Are you making an assertion? I'm just throwing something out on the table okay okay which, are, you which giving, can... okay. are you giving me an assertion that something ultimately exists that necessarily entails the falsity of god it could be the case yeah no no, mean, no, if, no i don't if, I'm not, no 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 what you see again this is this the, the second time you either you don't understand or you're not answering the question your position, as you originally articulated it about God, I've already explained to you, necessarily entails the falsity of God. It is an indirect, implicit denial of the existence of God. Hey, what, so the question I pose to you is, how is it the case that the existence of God is false? That it get the okay. That God if, I, I think I think I think I know how to answer it now. How to answer it, bet, get given your approach, and I think perhaps saying it like this will answer your question. If you think that the existence of God is something necessary, and I am saying that I don't believe that God is necessary to give us what we experience, then therefore I am saying that your version of God is false. Because if your version of God is something necessary, and I'm saying I don't see it being necessary, then I'm saying I don't see your God. Which yeah, you still have it. You, 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 you have not answered the question. How is it that the the, the existence of God uh, does not exist? Because we have um, alternative things to appeal to, i.e. unknown natural causes. Okay, is there necessarily another ultimate and unconditional absolute that is impersonal that you, that, you, that, that you are willing to assert is the case and therefore necessarily um, demonstrating the falsity of a personal absolute that we call God? naturalistic pantheism okay so can you tell me within that framework what is it that is ultimate absolute and unconditionally non-dependent that all dependent states are derived from well it's eternal it's non-contingent it's the what is it um, what, is, what is it it's just something that's eternal i mean i think you can give it any name you want i mean god's just a name 
I can call it Shablu Blue if you want. He's stating no, the properties. I'm, I, I'm asking you, what is this impersonal absolute ultimate? What is it? He's stating it's, its properties. Yeah, it's a natural force, ultimately unguided, okay. um, without okay. will or can, intent. Can, can, can you tell me by what means you were able to ascertain that this impersonal ultimate actually exists? What is your good reason that the that that which is absolute exists and is impersonal? What's your good reason for that? Well, we we look into the universe. No, I didn't. I didn't ask we. I asked you. Okay, I I look into the universe and I see very much an impersonal process, albeit we are. Um, existing now and that's rather favorable are you looking us. are you are you seeing dependencies or are you seeing no, I'm, that which is non-dependent i'm seeing gradual evolution from you know from particles chemicals you, did, you didn't answer biological. you didn't answer you didn't understand the question when when you look at something whatever that is you will you will either declare that that which you claim you are observing is unconditionally absolute and non-dependent, or what you are seeing is a dependency that it begins to exist. Now, what do you see that is in fact unconditionally non-dependent and without beginning? Um, I haven't seen anything yet that I can verify. To so then you don't have a good eternal. reason for, so you don't have a good reason that there is an unconditional ultimate non-dependent impersonal entity do you well actually I, I think let me re-answer that question i think i think we see consistently that things happen because of natural laws that that we can trace back that that doesn't address the question well no it does address the question it does no does you're you're, are... you're invoking listen uh you're invo you're seeing you're referring to dependencies things that begin to exist now have you ever observed okay um, anything that is unconditionally non-dependent, ultimate, mm -hmm. absolute, and energy. has not begun to exist. Okay, okay. You have you have you seen energy? Oh no, but we can we can we can okay. uh, right, right, measure right. back. So we can we, no we can no. So we can, at the beginning yeah, that, of the universe, just, energy. Listen, listen you're wasting my time because all you're simply doing is is every time I ask you a highly specific question about that which is ultimate, you launch into a a mini monologue about science i'm not asking you about that i'm asking what you, should, you what you should really what do specifically is question, ultimate absolute and, and did not begin to exist that you actually have acquisition through your eyes well we are able to um we are able to appeal to for example the first law of thermodynamics which would say that energy cannot be created or destroyed and it would you're not seem answering my that, question well if you would uh, if you would let me answer the question. You're completely. telling me that you see dependencies. I'm, I'm not asking. I'm you telling you that there is something that our that our universe came from, in a sense, because is it ultimate? Our, our space time emerged from a yeah, the big know, bang theory I, I know talks about this. our space. Time, I know all this. About what, I know all this. What it came from, and I it seems that the, the energy, yeah. the energy wasn't created it or seem, destroyed. It seems, or did you yeah, observe it, it, that? Okay, did you yeah, look, we observe, observe all that together with his you, We observe we observe consistently. All right, I gotta turn him oh. down. Okay. Did you <laughs> what you um I fucking love that you're, you're, you're just you're just giving me rhetoric, okay? You're not a dent you're giving me many monologues on scientific relationships of cause and effect relationships. You're invoking things that begin to exist. What I want to know is do you see with your eyes anything that is unconditionally non-dependent and did not begin? As far as there is talk, Do you have um, an answer to I that see, question? I've asked it four I times see, already. Yeah, I see a relationship between um, things, and that relationship we have. Rel uh, I, I didn't. Value. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you that question. I said, do you have visual acquisition of that which is ultimate? absolute and unconditionally non-dependent and eternal what for, through my senses of the empirical world i'm waiting this is if, the fifth time i've asked the if, question if we're going to appeal to the empirical world then no okay so so uh then do you have any other rational justification 
since you've dismissed your sensory perception? Uh, how do you rationally account for that which is ultimate, absolute, and unconditionally non-dependent and impersonal? How do you rationally justify that? Because that's your well, criterion of belief. Well, we look at the relationships that we can establish exist, right? And the relationships that we've been able to establish exist with some consistency all seem to be revolved around some kind of natural laws, right? You're giving me the same rhetoric you did 10 minutes ago, sir. You're not answering the question. Well, I, I mean, I don't know exactly what you're, what you're asking. What is your, it's, oh, I'm asking you very simple. Since you require a good reason or a rational justification to believe in the personal absolute that we call God, you by default will believe in an impersonal absolute, which will be the basis of all dependent states. Talking about the glories of science and the relationship of events does not answer the question. So I'll ask for a sixth time. What's your rational justification for what the, that which is absolute, ultimate, unconditionally non-dependent, and does not possess personhood? What's your justification for that? Justification for that is that our universe seems to have had a beginning of space. He cut out. I, emerged, but I, I said that because our universe, our observable universe, seems to have had a beginning it's, of space it, no, and time. Seems is not a, ra seems is not a okay. rational justification. Empirically, empirically, our universe has, uh, uh, it, it, it seems to be justifiable to claim that our universe had a beginning because Good. Of the Big Bang can you, theory can and you get, you, you that. have yet, you have yet to answer the question every time I so ask that would the be same that the question. Beginning would be contingent upon some, uh, some process no. that made Good. that begin. Well, okay. You haven't identified that yet. Can you please identify that, which is absolute, ultimate, unconditionally non-dependent and provides for all dependency states. Every time I ask the question- Well, it's some kind of talking. unknown natural force. May I, may, I, may, I finish, please? may I finish, please? Because you're having a comprehension problem, okay? Every time I've <laughs> asked the question and I've been highly specific and clear, you keep on giving me a monologue about um, cause and effect relationships. I didn't ask you about that. I ask you, what is ultimate absolute and unconditionally non-dependent and what is your rational justification for it? I don't want to hear about cause and effect relationships. Nature. What, it, what, what, is, what does that mean? Nature, natural laws. Okay, so, well. The uh, same what things you, that made our space okay. time emerge. Okay, well, are, are you familiar with Stephen Hawking? Yes. Okay, Stephen Hawking has stated, and you tell me if you agree with him, okay? Um, Stephen Hawking says, um, uh, lot, and I'm going to paraphrase, okay? Stephen Hawking says, prior to the Big Bang, the, law, the laws of nature break down. So did the laws of nature begin? Well, the laws of nature as we understand them break down. We have no, no ability did to... The laws of nature, did, did, did the laws of nature begin, or have they always existed? Uh, the laws of nature, as we observe them now, may not have always existed, but some. Okay, then kind that's of off. Then that's law. off. That that that's off the table. No, but so some you, kind of natural you, law. No, that exist. that's off the table. Well, then you're going to have to tell me then what is it specifically is ultimate, absolute, and unconditionally non-dependent and well, impersonal. What, what you is might, it? You is, might not be. This is the seven London. I'm being very respectful to you. This is the seventh time I've asked the question. So you might not be aware of, you know, the work of people like Sean Carroll and Nima Rakhani Hamad. I'm, I'm familiar with Sean using, Carroll. Okay. Well, and another one to watch as well. In which okay. I don't use, need, I don't need another monologue yeah, listen, about, about Sean I'm Carroll's going, cosmology. I'm what going, I want to know from I'm you is what is absolute, how, what is all, what is absolute, sir? Listen, I'm going to show how appealing to natural forces and that and our already um, given understandings expanded further than that can lead to an emergent space time. Yeah, don't you get what I'm having... saying to you? Listen, dude, don't you get what I'm saying to you? you keep <laughs> he on, doesn't you care. Keep, <laughs> you, you, yeah, you're just monologuing. I'm going to ask you the no, question I, for the eighth I'm not time. Even the what is it? Monologue. Listen carefully to the question. This is the eighth time I've asked you. What is it Your that is ultimate? Sorry, not talking to me. Okay, what is what is absolute and ultimate? 
and unconditionally non-dependent and therefore without beginning and eternal that provides Nature. for all dependency states. Nature. What does that mean? What is that? Nature is just... <laughs> okay, nature, is, 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 the, the moon, is the moon part of nature? Is the moon unconditionally absolute? <laughs> the, the moon is a product of nature. Okay, is, 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 is nature referring to... The, do you mean the universe? Nature mm -hmm. is... Every is ultimate is the ultimate. Nature hmm. is your God, just without consciousness. Sir, okay. Is when you say nature, do you mean all of the visible universe? All of the visible universe is a product of nature. When I look at the visible universe, okay. am you, I looking you, at God? Can, can you tell me the thing that you call nature? Can you tell me what is that? <laughs> the thing that you, it, do you know what it is? It's the thing that you call God without the consciousness. That's exactly right. what I it want, is. I want, I want, I want, I want to know what that is. It's whatever you call God. I mean, you surely no, no, you know it, what listen, you call you're God, not, right? You, listen, you're not, you're not getting it. It doesn't matter what I think. What matters <laughs> is what you think. I want to know. I'll ask the question for the ninth time. Calling it nature doesn't help me out. What is it specifically that you call nature? What is it? It's a, an eternal, all-powerful... It, it can't be the universe, because the universe is derivative. The universe began to exist. The universe is an, not ultimate. Listen, the universe cannot be absolute and unconditionally non-dependent, because you believe that the universe began to exist. So something other than the visible universe has to be ultimate absolute. What is that? You said it's, it's nature. I don't know what that... What is that? Uh, it's an all-powerful, eternal, natural force. What is um um what what is what, what do you mean? What do you mean force? Do you mean like at a quantum level? How did you how did how did you ascertain that there is an eternal force? <laughs> well, so because funny. I just I just look at the trees, and surely you can see <laughs> that there is an eternal natural all-powerful force. So, you so, 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 the problem, the problem with that is, when you say a tree, I, you're saying I, the tree I'm is the product of forces. Right. What, what you're doing is, is you're trying to invoke subtly that the tree is the product of some et et eternal law. How no, do you, no. how do you, how do you know there are laws of nature? Well, we experience them. No, sir, that's begging the question. No, it's all true. Just yeah. say you no. just say you presupposed no. retard. You're presupposing okay. your sense perception. Yeah. You're, just yeah. say when, it's your when, you, when, you, when when you when you talk when you say you experience them, you're begging the question. They are implicit mm -hmm. in your referencing sense perception. So it's begging the question. Yeah, talk about it. Well, I, I, have a coherent, I have a coherentism point of view in which you have axioms and you have your experience and you have the ability to be able to verify yeah. your, um, what your sensory unfortunately, experience is sensory. Un unfortunately, there's, there's a, and they, there's, and there's, that, there's a problem. a web of justification. Coherentism doesn't, uh, coherentism doesn't establish that which is absolute. Okay. Doesn't so I'm still, Doesn't I'm matter. still, I'm Give still, reasonable waiting. Justification. I'm still, I'm still waiting for you to give me a rational justification for that, which is not. It gives me, I have reasonable justification. What is it? What is your justification that there is something that is unconditionally non-dependent and ultimate? What is it? Your mom. Um, it's the exact same stuff that you use, the sort of stuff like okay. our universe exists. Sir, there are, what is there your is, yeah, you're interrupting is, Darth Dawkins. I'm let him finish. For a, you're yeah, let him finish, Darth rhetoric. Dawkins. I'm just going to okay. talk over you. It's you okay. can fucking convince <laughs> our people to behave, and you right, keep answering his questions this instantly. Okay. Right. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> I'm still going to talk to you. You, if now, you keep London, interrupting him, everyone should interrupt you at every time. And I'm waiting. I am and seeking waiting. to answer. I, look, I have the same data that you have, right, Darth? So no, I'm no, looking around the universe. Un unfortunately, I have we data. have two different worldviews. Okay. No, no, yeah. no. Listen, let me let me speak. For goodness' sake, are you just going to yeah, keep? I'm waiting for an answer to my question. I've asked it nine uh, times. I've asked. I've answered it. I've already proposed no, it as an no, all-powerful, eternal, natural force which enacts okay. change to the extent okay. that it's able to produce the universe that we experience. How do you? Then, how do you know? How do you know it's eternal? Well, because it...
Because of what? Well, sorry. I, I'm waiting, up, man. You just said because it. Get yeah. Stopped. Well, because yeah. it existed. Because our universe is contingent upon it. How do you know that? that they ha- okay. Okay. Well, okay. You haven't physically experienced that this absolute exists. So how do you know it exists, and how do you know it's eternal? I am. I am of the. Op- I, I think that truth exists. There is an ult- There is an ultimate truth, right? There is an ultimate. You're truth. not answering my question. Jesus told me. I'm asking uh, you an ontological question, not an epistemological one. Just bro, how do I know it's eternal? I don't. I, look, I don't. So like, I don't like that. Holy shit, <laughs> London, you're dumb as fuck. Okay. Yeah. Listen. Don't. Listen. <laughs> I want to. I want to compliment you. Listen. To everyone in the room, okay. I want to compliment the first debate. Darth Dawkins wins. So, so, okay, so even mind. even even though you've been completely incapacitated from answering my question, you do have uh, the good gift of gab. But having the gift of gab doesn't mean that you're a competent debater. You have violated. Gab? You have violated your atheist criterion of belief, where you require a good reason to believe in God. In the in the absence of having a good reason to believe in God, the personal absolute, you reject that. But you have not provided a good reason to believe in your impersonal absolute. You just assert that it is there, and you haven't told me how you. You have rationally justified or ascertained that it exists and it is there. Now, all you're, doing is, now, all you're simply is, doing. I, is I accept. I accept. Ev- I, I accept that. I accept that criticism because it's not a position that I hold. As in, this is what I'm convinced of. My position today has just been to demonstrate that what you're throwing at me in there, in that representation of a plausible um, alternative to what you propose, as in naturalistic pantheism, every criticism that was laid out at naturalistic pantheism can equally be laid at your door. Now Why it's are you your still turn talking? to answer Like, you make no sense, bro. Shut the fuck yeah, up. dude, what? dude, listen. No. listen having, having ultimately, the gift, ultimately, having the gift ul- for the gab is not debating, sir. No, no, ultimately, you can't... Ultimately, you're going to have to... Ultimately, to, to, ultimately, okay. ultimately... Okay, Wait, would you listen to me a favor? Gonna, listen, have, listen, would you guys do me a favor? Would you sometime. please stop trolling him? Let him speak. Yeah, the fuck? Look, at, so, at some point, at some point... You're going to have to, you know, do me the courtesy of allowing me to ask you a few okay. questions. Have you have you rationally justified that which is eternal? He doesn't and want a question. He doesn't to have to do that to validate his understanding yeah. of reality. You, you are the you one that have made an absolute that, which is ultimate You are the one that forces you an absolute the, listen, into the conversation. He doesn't exactly. have to force that. Lem, I can't he hear you. you I do not know. So if you're talking to me, I just That's hear you the problem here, so Koshin. I'm going to keep talking over you. You want me to repeat the question? about it. forever. Okay, okay. Uh, London. There's videos on YouTube of him doing that. Do, uh, do mean, you yeah, have yeah, a yeah, rational yeah, justification yeah, for right? that which is absolute and eternal? Yes or no? This this, this is a question. Do, do I have a rational justification for that which is right? absolute and this eternal? Is, yeah, uh, do we have Ma to the room? Can we can we stop the people who are trolling and disrupting? See, our how do you know is a question of epistemology. What do you know? Okay, what, so, what is it? Is okay. a question of ontology. Yeah. Right. So he was wrong before. Yeah, for the mods, for you know, I'll send. I'm going to send momentarily a note to the mod, the mod mail. <laughs> Jew producer is one of the Angstrike groupie stalkers. Okay, right, and he is simply here as he has on other platforms. I'm just correcting you to, to troll. Right? How okay, now I'm going to turn. I'm going to turn him down. Music. No one cares. Um, and and he he's a stalker. Okay, so London. Now I asked you a question. Do you have a rational justification for that which is eternal? Uh. Yes. Okay. How do you know that you something is eternal? Because something can be eternal. Have something you been around forever to observe that? Have you been around forever to observe that? No, but I think if something is okay, then how do you how do you know? Need a do beginning. you know? Listen. What is your rational justification for whatever you consider to be? Ultimate, absolute, and non-dependent. What is your rational justification that it is eternal? It's the same justification that you use for your position about God. Unfortunately, that's, this that's is what false. I'm doing. No, that's because this false. Isn't, you know this isn't ju- a position well, that tell I me, hold. Okay, tell me what my justification. Is. Tell me what my justification is for it. I don't know. I mean, I've, it, 
it, you don't know. You, well, if you don't know, you don't then know. how can you say it? If you say you don't know, then how did you say you're using the same justification that I am? Do you realize how you just shot Whatever yourself in the foot? No, no. Because my point bro, you're is retarded, so, bro. No, my point uh, is to show you that hey, whatever hey, talk, justification please. you use, no, my point is to show you that whatever justification you use. What is your? Okay, I'm still waiting. Your, listen, you know, I'm God, asking you. I'm asking you. Listen. And apply Listen, it to nature. you know, machine gun talking just simply makes you look bad before everybody in the room. Now, here's the question, right? What is your rational justification for that which you need to identify is absolute and eternal? What's your justification that it is eternal? It need not be eternal to, to be the source of creation. Is your absolute eternal or not eternal? It needs not be eternal. I asked you, which is your absolute? Just say you don't know. Source, yeah, my, my my absolute is the source of existence, and that's all I know. Whether is, or not, whether or not is that's what just, is what you consider to be absolute eternal. Not necessarily. No, no, sir. I'm asking you what your position is. My position is you that you don't know. Just say that. Holy I, shit. Yeah, either I you don't, don't, I know, don't know. Either you don't know. Okay, so you so what you're appealing to is absolute. You don't know it's eternal. If you don't know it's eternal, then you can't say it's absolute. Then you have no right. foundation. Listen, you've just you've just shot yourself in the in the second foot. If you don't know that something is foot. eternal, if something is eternal, then it then by definition it would be unconditionally non dependent. Okay? Now, if you don't know that it is eternal, then what you're referring to, if it exists, would be dependent. And if it's dependent, then it wouldn't be absolute and the basis for all facts. So basically what you have conceded to after we set aside all of your monologuing and rhetoric is you have, you have no identifiable, rationally justified, ultimate, absolute basis for any contingent so, facts that you verbalize. What I'm saying is that we cannot rule out the possibility that there is no reason for existence and existence you're not you're not began. understanding you're not understanding no, 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 the dilemma no, no, you're no, no, in no, no. if you can't because identify listen carefully this is very simple and i want to see if you have the ability to comprehend this if you cannot identify by a rational justification that which is eternal absolute and non-dependent then you will have no basis for facts do you understand the problem Oh my God. Um, I don't see that L as being London. a true representation of, of, of what's going on there. I said, London. do you understand do you know the problem? Is? Okay. London, do you know, now, what, do you know what if you, um, is? If you're going to verbalize any facts, London, right, a fact that you articulate is either going to be unconditionally, non-dependent, absolute, and ultimate, or the fact in question will be derivative of that which is absolute okay now you have been verbalizing a great many facts but you have also admitted that you cannot identify what is you cannot account or rationally justify for what is absolute and an ultimate which would be the basis for all dependent facts so you have conceded that you have no basis for the facts that you're asserting the, the dependent facts or the derivative facts that you're asserting all of the I've facts that you're that they okay. be arbitrary. No, you're not I've understanding. You're not understanding. Your facts are without ultimate intelligibility because they come from nowhere. No, okay? that's not true at all. Good. Then I tell mean, me where, from, where, I've where, where okay, what is it that your facts are ultimately derivative of? Okay. Let's, let's say that there is a metaphysical truth. No, I want you to tell me, not give me a hypothetical situation, okay? Maybe no, this, that's, maybe that's, that. That's, that's I'm asking you, you or not. what is it, listen, what is it that all facts are derivative from? The ultimate metaphysics, like from metaphysics, from the ultimate truths of reality. Which is? What, what is that? The ultimate truth of reality. What is that? Again, there is the ultimate truth of reality. I don't and, know what that is. Well, 
there we go. That's that's your answer. That's what you should be saying. When no, I'm waiting for position, an answer. What is it? Real, do you have any, listen, do you have any idea how foolish you look before everybody in the room? Whoa, uh, that's not so all. rude, dude. That that's no, that's, it's that, an I, accurate I don't, I don't description. See, I don't see why, because all I'm all I'm pointing out okay. is that you're positing this answer, right, which requires a mind. No, we've dismissed all that. Doing is that's already been dismissed. Your that's mind already been dismissed without a mind. I'm using that's exactly already been dismissed thing. by you. I'm, I'm, that's not that's not germane right now. What is germane is you say you do not need the personal absolute God. So what I'm asking you is when you are presenting facts that you purport to be meaningful, actual, and intelligible, I'm a asking you what is it the, uh, that is ultimate and absolute and eternal? What is it? The eternal part, I don't it doesn't necessarily have to be the case. Theism, right? Yeah, sir, exactly. sir listen to me. Atheism. Eternal. eternal part if something is eternal, if, if, if it if something if something is eternal, okay, it doesn't have a, be a beginning. All right. Let, let, let's existence. say let's say let's say we remove random. We, we remove the, the the possibility, even how small it may be and how little I may want to acknowledge it. It's there. But let's just say we remove that possibility of it being. You're not true. saying anything. We, the last minute you haven't said anything. Then, then we grant eternity. If we remove the potential for ar for arbitrary, then yes, we 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 grant. You're giving grant me. Eternity. You're giving me. You're giving me empty rhetoric. You're not. Say, you're not answering my question. What is it? Here's the question. What is it that is eternal, absolute, non-dependent that provides for all dependent facts? What is it? Naturalistic pantheism. <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, okay. Pan pan see, here's 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 the problem. Okay. When you say pantheism, pantheism means theism is God and pan means all. All is God. Okay. Now, the, the problem with that is you're, you are, whether you realize it or not, you're advocating that all is all is one is the ultimacy of the, are you, are you, are you, a, are you a pantheist? No, there's a there's a difference between pantheism and naturalistic okay. pantheism. Is, naturalistic is, pantheism okay, what is the is, is okay in that your view? Have any supernatural okay, mind. is okay. Is the whole eternal? The whole of existence? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, if we're if we're removing the possibility of things being arbitrarily in existence, so then yes, so, I would say so, eternity so the, is the so so the if the universe if if the if the whole is eternal then that would make that the universe is eternal. Did the universe begin no. to exist? Did the universe begin? The universe can just be one piece of that, which is. Existing. No, you're, no, you're saying the whole, listen, you're, you see, you are not understanding your metaphysical conundrum. No, no, it's quite, because you're, 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 you're not, you're, 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 listen, dude, you're, 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 you're not, you're not, on, the universe you're not, okay, he's a pantheist, you're making okay, sad, now. But. The problem is simply this. If you are an advocate of pantheism, that all is God and all is one, is all eternal or not? Uh, not, well, it depends what you mean by by all. I mean, you can have you can have finite processes that Sir, emerge tell out me, of tell me, tell me, listen, process, listen, right? What you what you are doing, okay? You can have you can have finite listen, lines off of an see, I have to line. go in a minute. I have to go in a minute. I'll I'll be back in about 15, 20 minutes. But what you are just doing is you're just responding with nonsensical hypotheticals. You're not telling me specifically. And in a circumspect way, what what is ultimate? You're just throwing out stuff like, "Oh, I'm a naturalistic pantheist." So I'm asking you: Is the whole, is the sum total of all that exists in your view eternal? Simple question. Yeah. Yes. It's okay. So the universe is part of the the whole. Is the universe eternal? The energy which makes it up. No, Perhaps. I didn't. Ask, yes. I didn't ask you that. I said, "Is the universe eternal?" The universe is a is a structure as we see it now. Now, the universe are, are, is going to are, are, are all are all the stuff that are in the universe are they eternal or did they begin to exist? We don't know. 
there there was a, a change. There was a change. You talk about a beginning, like there was from nothing, this thing begins and comes out of nowhere. Well, the there universe was... cannot be eternal if it began to exist. You need to make up your mind. I think what he's well, saying we is need that to differentiate. I'm not interested in hearing anyone else's opinion we need, right now. We need to, we I'm need just to interested in hearing London. We need to differentiate between our observable universe and the cosmos, as in all that exists, right? So if all that exists is eternal, and our universe is, is it is it is it is all women is all that exists eternal if all that exists is eternal no no don't give me that, an if in your model of reality is all that exists eternal trying to why aren't you letting him finish his premise yeah um the reason the reason why i'm sticking to the question sir is because he's simply giving me uh unrelenting monologuing and rhetoric he's not no, answering the question you keep talking over him okay i'm not I, interested i'm gonna turn you down I don't, i'm not interested in you talking bye over bye him. turn you down okay bye -bye. Presenting, bye -bye. Conditional, it doesn't matter. presenting conditional okay. arguments now, isn't rhetoric. i'm waiting for How an answer to the question is the rhetoric. whole of reality yeah is everything in the question at this point uh, right there eternal it's okay it's okay. What? What was that, Darth? I couldn't hear you. What was it? Anyway, what London most likely means is that I'm waiting, we haven't found yeah, a way what, to destroy what? energy, so in that I'm sense, waiting. it would be eternal. Is all that exists in your view, since you're a, a naturalistic Hey, London, I, I'd like is to hear everything what, your eternal. Eternal. what was your premise again? So I'd like to hear I'm it. What saying, was your premise? I'm waiting. For, 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 I'm, I'm a bit confused here, right? So hold on. We have, the question is, is what was the question? You told me your you're a naturalistic pantheist. I'm asking you: Is all that exists in your in your atheistic uh, worldview is all that exists eternal? Uh, by all, yes. Let's just go with yes. Is a simple answer. Okay. Yes. And how did how did you rationally justify that the everything in existence is eternal? Because we cannot create or destroy energy that's one justification uh, how for, do you how do you, well, no, no, what do you mean, wait okay the fact that you cannot create or destroy energy and you do not know of a means uh, by which matter and energy can be created or destroyed it doesn't necessarily follow from that that matter and energy cannot be created or dest uh, destroyed. What you are, what you are appealing to, yeah, but, what but you are. Hold on a second. What you, the second law of thermodynamics that you're appealing to First is law. an appeal to induction. It's a fallacy. It it, re it reasonably okay. follows. Though, do you, it? Do you it, it reasonably, reasonably follows? follows? Look, when you I say when you I'm say it reasonably certain. follows, no. What you're doing is Look. your your reason is it inductive? Listen, is your reason, the, is your reason for the, the second law of thermodynamics inductive? It's the first law, by the way. First law. Of okay, yeah, that's that, that's correct. The first law. Okay. Are you in your assertion of either the first or second yes, law of thermodynamics? Is it inductive? Is it inductive? Yes, inductive. Okay. Does now, is it arrive in, at certain conclusions? No, it okay. doesn't. But okay. does induction does does, does the okay? Listen, answer? listen. When you use induction to assert the first and second law of thermodynamics. To then uh, a stat try to give me a justification that all that exists is is eternal. Okay, it the use it, the conclusion from induction is doesn't necessarily follow. So that's a fallacy. Yeah, it just it just reasonably okay? follows. Yeah. So you're going to have you're going to have to use another line of rational justification to rational rationally justify that the uh, everything that does exist. Is, Let is, me address is that. Eternal. Let me you address can't that. Use you can't use induction. Let me address well, that. Well, that's, that's not true. A deductive reasoning is saying. <laughs> wait, wait a second, Donald. Can I ask you? Can I? Because yeah, he, he tried to trick you just saying inductive. Down but one of the problems you have here is that, for example, saying me, everyone okay? dies is deductive reasoning. Okay. As far as we know, well, everyone will waiting. die. No one's They're listening to you, let me say. If no one's listening, okay? I don't know why you guys want to listen to me. Trash. Am I not right? So, so, so. So okay. London, you yeah. can't use induction. You cannot no, no, use let, let induction me me to rationally justify that everything that exists is eternal. So how did you determine that everything that exists is eternal? Let how did me, you determine let me that? Respond. Let me respond. I agree that the, that using induction doesn't arrive you at certain conclusions. I agree, but you can use induction to arrive at the best 
inference. That doesn't matter. You see, the uh, it's, abduction. It's abdu right. You're appealing now to abduction. At the conclusion of abduction does not necessarily follow. Your position is that all that exists is eternal. I want a rational justification, okay, that necessarily follows that all that exists is eternal. But you're, yeah. you are. Do you have one? But you are asking. You are asking something that um, you can't provide yourself. Okay. Right? Do you have an answer to that question? At uh, London, I sent you a DM. Do the, you the, have an answer to that question? What's the question? Do you have a rational justification that all that exists is eternal? I I think that it's rational to infer. It's reasonable to infer. Does it necessarily follow? Does it necessarily follow? No. Logical, Do I rational. have justification okay. in inferring okay. it? Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but it's not necessarily true, then, right? Yeah, it doesn't necessarily follow. I've said so. That from, is it okay? Okay. So, so basically, you're guessing. <laughs> you are guessing that all that exists is an eternal, right? It's a. It's not just a random guess. It's. A, I didn't a guess say it was. I didn't say it was random. Does your assertion that everything that exists is that necessarily it's an true? It's and a I'm, 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 I'm. I'm well. Okay. Is it? Is is it justified? Is it necessarily true? No. It's a justified inference because we have you, no examples okay, to the contrary sir, to base sir, our, to sir, base any sir, opinion on. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't matter if you don't have any examples to the contrary. The fact of the matter is you're asserting that some are you asserting necessarily that all that exists is eternal. I'm asserting that given that what given what we experience that you, we don't have any experience. You don't to, listen, to dude. This is your fundamental problem in the entire conversation because when I ask a very specific question, I am very circumspect in the words that the I choose. Law, now, let me finish, please. Let me finish, please. Listen, down. spewing rhetoric, you see, what you're trying to do is you're trying to deflect from my question. I ask you, are you asserting that all that exists necessarily is eternal? Ask where the burden of proof is on you. Do you have an answer to that? All that is, is is necessarily eternal. I don't have any justification in claiming absolute certain knowledge on that. But yeah. I, do not, have I didn't a ask you. I didn't ask you about your psychological confidence. Okay, so you can set aside the word certainty here. What I'm asking you is simply this: Are you asserting that all that exists is necessarily eternal? Something, something is necessarily eternal. No, necessarily you just you all just, that exists. Okay, you've now contradicted yourself because previously you said that you're a naturalistic pantheist and you said it was all eternal. Now you just contradicted yourself. Well, no, because I've said that there is an eternal pro no, okay, Lond Lond London, this is really embarrassing for you. Yeah, no, it is. Just step down, you, London. You, you, you listen, London, you, you flatly contradicted yourself. Now, either you are completely oblivious and you have poor memory re re retention about what you just said a few <laughs> minutes ago, or what you're doing is, is you're being deceptive and trying to pretend that you haven't contradicted yourself. So I don't know which is worse, being deceptive or that you just – you don't have the memory skills to, to recognize you've contradicted yourself. And anyway, well, why don't we, why don't, why don't we, why listen, don't we try London, hold on, hold on. I'll be done in, I'll be done in 20 seconds. I'll be done in 20 seconds. I have an errand that I need to take care of. I will be back um, shortly, 20 minutes, maybe. Okay. Maybe even, maybe even, even sooner, but thank you for the conversation. You've demonstrated the complete incoherency of your atheistic position. Thank you for your time. <laughs> and London, you're a fucking oh, brainlet. <laughs> wow. Brainlet. Darth really demonstrated how incompetent he was, didn't he? Bro, London, no, no. go and really fucking grab a book. Really, I, I like really, it. really, listen, really was impressed by how well he did. wanted to that. find uh, something listen, to capitalize on. That's why he left. Listen, <laughs> to be honest, this is not a position that I hold, as in I'm not Bro, you got demolished. Myself. GG loser. Oh, no, let, him talk. let him talk. London. Listen, I'm not a naturalistic pantheist myself. 
if he would give me the opportunity now to ask him some questions and allow me to 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 produce what he has just produced there because ultimately he is going to give the same sort of answer as what I have. He's going to rely on on uncertain he's going to rely on claims to knowledge that aren't justified Bro, in any sort so of certainty. Salty. No, London, no, no, no. London, no, no. London, London, London. One of the London, key things that London, you're doing that's wrong is that you're answering his questions when they're a fallacy, right? So he's trying to create yeah. a scenario where you have to choose yes or no. For example, that's a loaded question. He's also trying to get you to admit that his worldview as an ab- there, that there are absolutes. Oh, that's you know that's how it actually is. Now you don't have to say that there is an absolute. There's no real evidence of saying that there's an absolute. So why would you have to say what is? You will an absolute? point out that you're making an absolute claim. Yeah, a lot, a, a lot of a lot of his questions as well, right? You'll notice are actually like if you think about it, are incoherent, right? So exactly. he wants to say that God is the right. So he wants to say something like God is the in, is independent of all things, but is a provider or a cause, right? But what does it mean to be a provider or a cause without that the effect or that which is provided, right? How at that point are you not dependent? Like if you're a cause, how are you not dependent on there being an effect? What does it mean to be a cause with no effect, right? So his entire idea, right, that there could be something necessary, right, that is uh, non-dependent but also causal or uh, provisionary, right, is just incoherent off the bat. What does it even mean? Exactly. Listen to this guy. He's not all very salty, to be honest. No, (laughs) just let him calm down. Don't don't fucking rile him up anymore. He's already fucking pissed. He likes London. London, man, you got to stop letting him over talk you and control the conversation. You couldn't even make your argument. When you guys oh, look, this, he this, will that's, you that's part you of the problem too. Is obviously he's got his he's got his rhetoric, and I'm a, I'm a bit too, I, I guess, naive when it comes to Slow. when it comes to dealing with people. Like <laughs> hey, cut it out! Cut it out! No, he's so he's already think, cut up. No, I think when I go back and when I have another conversation with him, I'm going to press him more on his position <laughs> in terms of trying to. Sub- 